Thank you. Good evening. I'll um, call to order the Thursday, July 1st, 2021 meeting of the Town of North Andover Community Preservation Committee. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandovermma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel and over cam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we'll post on the town's on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in the public meeting, please email your questions or comments prior to or during the meeting to dbeckley, that's D-B-E-C-K-L-E-Y, at northandovermma.gov. The question or comment will be provided to the committee before the meeting or read during the proceedings if received during or shortly before the meeting. Okay, hopefully the last time to read that. Um, I'm going to do through, go through and do a quick roll call um, just for the minutes. Uh, John Simons? I'm here. Tracy Watson? Here. Uh, Terry Holland? Here. Bill Callahan? Here. CJ Ganji? Here. Rick Green? Here. Uh, Jack Maven? No, Jack. Okay. All right. So, great tense. Guys, thank you everyone for making the effort. I know I'm, I'm breaking some recent protocol by actually having a meeting that is technically in the summer. Um, but we want to wrap up, uh, you know, last full handful of items that we had, um, you know, on the agenda. So uh, we'll get right into it because I know Glenn's got uh, only a handful of minutes uh, before he has to jump. So um, first item on our uh, on our agenda is a discussion with Glenn. Uh, Bill, I think you had some questions on regarding uh, the property at 623 Osgood Street and how we're going to tie in or it's going to tie into the existing trail network. So. Uh, Bill, if you want to go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, hi, Glenn. Um, hey. we, we were um, we were just wondering about 623 Osgood Street and how that could the useful property and how that could tie into you know all the trails, kind of Half Mile Hill, and then heading over towards um, the Stevens Estate and that property, which is now you know in conservation as well. Um, so we know. You know that we're not going to go forward with a parking lot there at this time but we were wondering what in terms of trails we would be doing on that property and if it was um appropriate to have a you know maybe like a trailhead there um and another access point you know from osgood street up into the trails sure yeah i mean we did it um i was present at a site walk uh i guess that was probably oh, that was in the fall because there was beautiful those maple trees were gorgeous um, in the fall. And um, we, what we, we determined was, what, first of all, that there's definitely a huge potential for a loop trail um, starting at the main kiosk. Um, if you then up there, you see the giant Eagle Scout kiosk that the, um, there. Um, and if you, there's, a, there's, a, there's a carriage road off to the right that we have always steered people away from because it just kind of pops out at um, that private driveway there up to the up to the house on the hill. Mm -hmm. um, but what we found was that if as long as we have the, the appropriate arrow signs, um, we can do a nice loop around that open of the Usler property. Um, really nice sort of loop trail starting at that main trailhead. Mm -hmm. And um, it was pointed out that one nice thing about it is that it's nice and level or relatively level compared to like almost every other trail in town is um, goes up or down a hill. And this was a nice, nice, it's short, but it's a nice loop through the field. Um, and, it, and it looked, it seemed like it was fairly easy to, um, it would be fairly easy to mark. And um, it looked like we would need um, one or two little, little bog bridges over some wet areas. Right. Um, but that, that right. was, so that was, that would be a nice sort of like phase one. And then um, down to the street, we walked that way. Um, 
and it was it was quite walkable. Um, there were a few concerns raised. Um, there was the um, the sort of like the how we weren't sure how wet the 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 front yard area got, so that was something that we weren't able to determine at that time. Right. Um, the other, um, and then there was a, a spot where the trail kind of comes pretty close to um, two different houses up there, um, and uh, it seemed doable, but like I don't know. Um, like what the what the situation would be with with running the trail, um, kind of getting close to people's side yards and backyards um, back there. But it seemed like it was definitely something where we could make a connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other um, thing I wasn't so sure about was at the very beginning when you're starting on Osgood Street, you're essentially going right into that um, what a, a passerby would assume is that person's yard. Um, and the trail would just run kind of like it would kind of skirt the edge of the grass like there isn't any ability to put it like in the bushes. Um, really realistically, the trail would have to go in the, along the very edge of the yard along the grass. And if we did that, we would just have to really think through how. Um, how the trail is maintained and marked right um, because like. I not we weren't even sure when we were there, like who's mowing that grass. Um, but. That would have to be like a defined trail where we either have signs or or um, markers or something um, just at least for the first few years to before it kind of gets beaten down as a trail. Um, just to make sure people don't. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like it just seems like I mean, I've seen a field people do when they get to a trailhead They they take their dog out of the car, they take it off the leash and let it run wild and um, I just wasn't quite sure since that trail is just kind of up the side of a, a yard, like how that would work. Yeah, I mean, that, I, we found it, we found it to be doable, but but with some consideration, mm -hmm. consideration, some things to take into account in the right. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know it'd be good to have a conversation with you know all the stakeholders and, and kind of figure it out. And you know, part of the thing is, it looks you know yes, it very much looks like a yard, but it's very much public land so that's that's the tricky part yeah. you know it looks like a, a yard because it's being maintained more or less as a yard um but you know we do have some funding available you know still left on that line item um that we could use for for trails and sort of to try to figure out how to do it and there is sort of that corner in the the brick wall that runs all the way to osgood street which you know, if, when I looked at it, my thought was if you if you had a trail kind of tight to the brick wall, you know, that's a good sort of, you know, left hand boundary for the trail. And if you kept it, you know, six to eight feet, you know, from that in, it would be, you know, the, the impact would be small and it'd be kind of clearly defined as, hey, this this trail hugs the rock, you know, follows the rock wall up the hill until you get to the meadow and, and buy sort of the, the property. Well, it's the wall, it's kind of in the vegetation, right? It's kind of in that sort of wooded buffer in um, like along the edge of the property or was it, I don't really remember. And I know there's a wall border there, but it seemed like there was a lot of along the, along between the wall and the, and the grass. Um, I think right at the corner there is, yes, right at the corner on Osgood. Um, mm -hmm. So there'd have to be some clearing there and then, um, you know, and then creation of the path sort of behind it. I mean, I could pull the, I could pull the plot plan up actually. Look, I guess if I might, you know, Glenn, let me ask you a question. Do you foresee demand coming from Osgood Street for, for walkers? Do you, do you foresee you know folks in the neighborhood or others that who would use that trailhead as opposed to only using the Stevens current you know, trailhead access? Um, I, I haven't really talked to anyone that was that that was enthusiastic about a trailhead there. I mean it since there's already a trailhead on Osgood Street um, and also the Stevens estate and also at Edgewood 
Um, it's definitely a situation where there's no shortage of trailheads for that property. Um, but I mean, usually what we see with these paths where there's no big parking area, we kind of refer to it as a community path, you know, where people, it would really just be neighbors that would be going in there. So that they tend to be much less trafficked uh, right. trails. So I haven't, I mean, I haven't really, I've, like among the, the, the friends group, no, no one is really like super enthusiastic about adding that trail, but I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be unused, I guess. So, so this is Terry. Uh, there is a, um, the high school had, they were using it for the um, cross country team when I was keeping it open before. And then with COVID it all kind of stopped, but they do have a, they do like it rather than going down the winding driveway with the cars coming up at the Stevens estate when they do their run, they liked exiting through that a lot. Oh, they went, so if we they, could make, they, they ran up there? Yeah, yep, yep. Oh, cool. So you probably have more, more, um, more to add about that the trail than than I do. I mean, if you were keeping that right. that open for the for the kids. Well, that's what I was trying to do. I was up there cutting it and um, keeping it open so that they could continue their run down there rather than going down the uh, the winding the winding driveway. Nice. So they would all they would all just come down the the, the grass there. Yeah, they liked it. They they thought that was a great. Great uh, exit. Yeah. Cool. Well, the the team running on it would definitely keep it trampled down. That's for sure. Um, hey, yeah. Glenn, let me ask you maybe another question here. If I mean, we say part of the block is people, you know, look at it and say it's a it looks like a private property, right? Because of its the way it's maintained. What if it was no longer mowed and allowed to be more like a field with only a trail through it? Would that be more inviting to to people to to invite more use? I mean, I don't, I don't think that the, that the mode area would be disinviting the people so much as just um, sort of maybe potentially difficult to kind of delineate where the trail is. Right. Um, I mean, uh, but I mean, <laughs> I, I hadn't really thought about the mowing situation. I mean, sure. I know that the trustees have plenty of field, fields they let grow up as, as does the town. And I mean, it's, they are beautiful. Those, those, those unmowed fields. Yeah. But, I, but, uh, I mean, and definitely. I mean, signage signage would go a long way to, to um, you know, drawing attention to the fact that it's public property. Okay. I feel like people in North Andover are pretty like judicious about just kind of wandering into random fields. Right. It's not like up here in New Hampshire. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, and I think sign that's... and people people could see that it's a trailhead. I think that's where, you know, from all of our discussions on the committee, where it's come from is, you know, we've, uh, you know, a, a, the town has acquired this land and, and spent a good amount of money for it. I want to make sure that it, it, it gets every opportunity to be used um, and enjoyed by, you know, by residents. So, you know, whatever hurdles may be in the way of that, I think that's where we're trying to make sure we understand, you know, how we lower whatever barriers, you know, the friends group or, or you know, people who use the trails may see and, that's, I think, why we're, you know, kind of having this discussion now. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, I was going to ask, like, you know, you, you did a great sort of that map you did that Brian showed us from the walk was really helpful. Maybe we could do, I don't know, is, is how much work is it to do a couple different variations on that and say, like, you know, here's a couple different proposals and then you know, we could start to have a discussion with, you know, the abutters and the committee and, and everybody and, and and see, you know, what, what would help it be the most uh, useful. Yeah, I mean, it's easy for me to, if we, if we people had their different variations we wanted to, 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 to propose. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is, a, it's, it's gorgeous when, once you get up there, I mean, um, we could do like a couple different uh, options for um for different trails and see what people think. Okay. Um, yeah, happy to, happy to help with that. Okay. All right. I I don't have any other questions or, or comments on it. Does anyone else on the committee at this point for Glenn? 
No, well done. Oh, all good. Glenn, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to kind yeah. of enlighten us a little more on this. So I, I think, you know, maybe our, our fault might be, Bill, I don't know if you want to maybe hand mark up a couple of things on that and maybe uh, zip them over to Glenn. You can take a peek yeah. and yeah. see what that looks like, and we'll figure out next steps uh, you know, later on. So Yeah, yeah. If, people, if, if people can walk it and, yeah, the more people that, that are over there and checking it out, the better, too. Okay. You kind of you can't get through the stone wall right now, but you can kind of go <laughs> around. Right, right. 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 And, uh, that, that's the thing. Is, is we always want to lower all those barriers to to any kind of public access to it. So and make sure that it's uh, uh, that everyone can enjoy it because it is a great walk up there. So cool. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Well, thanks guys for getting me. Getting thank me you. Th thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. <clears throat> and, and have a safe trip back. Right. Okay. Um, from Glenn to Glenny, uh, Rick, you want to give us a quick update on the long-awaited Glenny Woodlot sign and where we're at? Because I believe you've had some discussions with the folks at Essex County Greenbelt, and we need to make a couple decisions, right? Yes. So I went back to Dawn's sign and worked with Dawn. She came up with an alternative sign design, which was more reasonable in pricing. So the sign would be a aluminum with a laminate on it, which she said is uh, some have been in service for over 10 years without any really degradation of them. So it, it sounds like it's a feasible option. Still looks the same. The sign price is now would be $500 and the, and the mounting bracket $75. So it's a total of $575. I did have some correspondence with Dave Rimmer and Again, his his position on that is we have three hundred dollars budgeted for the sign, so he's looking for direction from us whether he would make the three hundred dollar donation and we take care of the sign or how we how we want to work that. So that's that's where that stands right now. Um, Rick, did that include the sign post installation? That did not include the sign post installation. No. Okay. 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 Um... Uh, listen, I, I think we've we've belabored the discussion over one sign on one property for the better part of this this year. Um, I, I would say I think we've done. You know, we Rick has done a great job of going back and forth. You know, helping play middleman for us on this. So um, my, I mean, I'll put it out to anyone else and whatever thoughts you have. But I think we should, we would need to move this one forward. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Okay. All right. So, any reason we can't spend administrative funds to get this done? I, I, I don't see why we cannot. No, it's fine. Great. Okay. Um. All right. We need to take a vote. Someone make a motion. Um, move to approve the sign, the um, purchase and installation of the sign as outlined um, by Mr. Green. Thank you, Bill. Second. Seconded by Tracy. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Uh, all those in favor? John? Yes. Tracy? Aye. Terry? Yes. Bill? Aye. CJ? Yes. Rick? Yes. All right, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, all right, so Rick, you're all good then? We're good. Excellent. Okay. All right, uh, next on our uh, on our agenda is a quick discussion with Laurie Burslaff uh, regarding the playground master plan. Laurie, thank you for uh, joining us again. Appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time. Glad to be um, here. As I, as I think I, you know, I mentioned to you in some of our you know, correspondence you know, prior to the meeting, you know, the the playground master plan program obviously predates you know me and a few others of us on the committee um, was I think the first of its kind for our. CPC in terms of how it operated. So, um, in talking with the, you know, the committee, I think John had the suggestion of you know we would love to spend a little bit of time and talk about it, understand certain things that you know you learned, certain things that maybe we'd do differently or what worked, and, and just so we can kind of build the committee's knowledge base on it and see where are other opportunities to have a similar program like this to you know to leverage dollars and and, and create more community engagement. So. Um, I don't know if you want to give, maybe give us a, a quick summary of your overall thoughts of the project now that you're all said and done and, and looking back on it and 
and then I'll put it up to the committee uh, for a handful of questions, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so I guess I'll go back to uh, what Andrew May Andrew Mailer used to say, sure. was plan the work and work the plan. Um, and that's really exactly what we did. Um, we, we had the plan. Um, we followed it. At the very beginning, we had a lot of public input on the plan. Um, uh, we, we stated at the beginning, because it was a desire of um, the community that we revisit the plan because we were going out so many years, things change and we need to adapt. And that's exactly what we did. Um, for example, with Atkinson, when that all that construction was going on up there, it made sense to move Atkinson up in the um, in line. And, uh, and then also towards the end of the plan, we decided to, to request two playgrounds at once to try to get it done quicker. So, you know, we kept, we kept going back to it. We stuck to it for the most part, but we kept adapting as time went on. And I, and I think it went really smoothly. I mean, I'm pretty happy with, with everything. We, we had some good vendors. We used different vendors. Um, you know, uh, I felt it was important, well, not only from a procurement side, because we have to follow the procurement rules and get different bids and things like that. But um, I also felt like it was important to have a variety. Um, we didn't, I didn't want to have every playground be the same, which is why Applin ended up being the toddler playground. And we've gotten a lot of great compliments on that. I mean, we don't have anything like that in North Andover. Most, all the other playgrounds are, you know, five to 12 years old and, and the basic slides and, you know, some have the big balls, whatever it is. But um, I really liked that um, different kind of playground there. And, um, and then also the challenge course at Grogan's. And that came about from the youth center kids. So when we met, the youth center kids about Drummond, a lot of them said they wanted a challenge course. So when the next one came up, that was something that um, I took into account. And, you know, when we were asking for quotes, I was specifically looking for a challenge course. So it was good. Um, obviously most of the neighborhood involvement was around Drummond because that's really the town's sort of central playground. We did reach out to the neighbors, the PTOs, um, for all of the playgrounds. Um, sometimes we got input, um, Applin, we got a couple of the neighbors, um, you know, with their suggestions, uh, especially with the toddler playground, someone had suggested making sure to fence it in, um, which we were working on getting a fence and just being able to open it to let the trucks in or whatever that had to. Um, I think that's about it overall. I, I really think it went really smoothly. We haven't had any problems with our vendors. We haven't, you know, Stevens Pond is pretty much done. Um, and for this year, the um, the two playgrounds this year happen to both be schools. So how it's worked in the past is the schools take that completely. And I really just help them um, with the procurement steps to make sure that they're following the right procurement rules. Um, but they take care of designing, hiring, picking who they want, and then we just pay the bill on that. Really? Okay. Okay. Um, great. I mean, obviously it's a, a fantastic project. The playgrounds are getting a ton of use, um, which is, you know, obviously great to see. Um, so I'll, I'll put it out to the committee. If you guys have any, any questions, I have a handful of questions myself, but I'll, I'll put it out to, mm -hmm the group first. I don't know if John, you wanted to start. This was kind of, I know you had certainly had a few thoughts. Yeah. I, uh, Laurie, did, when any of the projects uh, did, uh, I, I should say at all the projects, did the, uh, the vendor do the install or were any of the installs done by volunteers? So the, the vendor did all the installs. We, when we did Drummond, we tossed that around and it's not a good idea, um, which is why we had, we wanted some sort of, people were asking at Drummond to be some sort of involved like community builds type of thing. And it's just too complicated now and there's too much liability um, to have volunteers build it. 
Um, so what we did at Drummond was we had volunteers come for a day and spread mulch. Well, not mulch, whatever that playground surfacing mm -hmm. is, the, the wood chips that we use. And that's how we got that involvement in. We had one day where we did that. But for all the other ones, no, we we hire installers. Okay. okay. Um, the other question I had is how many of the projects were partially funded by other sources where, I mean, in the beginning, uh, there were a number of cases where PTOs contributed money. Uh, was there any of that or was it just the amount that the CPA put in and that was it? So I haven't been involved with the playgrounds at the schools except for Atkinson. And I believe they raised a little extra money. We just told them that their budget was a hundred thousand and anything over that they'd be responsible. Okay. So Certainly with um, the ABECC and Thompson, which are the next two this year, we can ask them when we do the quarterly report what their contrib I don't know if they're planning on contributing anything. I, I don't think ABECC is going to probably, they might, I'm not sure, but because their small playground that's connected right to the school is in pretty good shape, <laughs> um, they're looking at the old Atkinson playground to really that's that's become now their playground. So that's the one they're going to concentrate on. And I'm not sure how big they want to make it for their age group. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Laurie? Yeah, I mean, a, a couple of things. I, um, first, I think, uh, Laurie, I think with the envy of every town around us in terms of our facilities right now, I mean, that's they're, they're outstanding. And I think everyone does look a little different and it's great that you did that. And uh, I'm thrilled with the project completely. Uh, the only question I did have is, um, we said that when we first sat with Andrew, we were talking about there was gonna be money put aside every year for repairs, not from CPC, but from the town. Did that, did that happen or is it continuing to happen? Yep, every year, if you look in our budget, $25,000 is in there for maintenance. And $50,000 is in the capital plan should we have to replace a piece of equipment. And we have been doing that consistently um, since this started. That that has not been cut at all, even this year. That's terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. It, that brings up an interesting point. Has any equipment need to be replaced yet since the first couple that were done? So we had um, no. Not since the beginning. Some of the old, like at Grogan's, but we we were able to do that simultaneously. Like since we put a whole new, um, uh, the challenge course in, a whole new set, the older playground, we needed to fix a couple of things on, but that nothing since we've installed that um, we I've been told, um, I can check with Jim Stanford because that ends up being his department, but I haven't heard of anything okay. failing. Did, did Columbia Gas kick in anything over at Grogan's? Not for the playground. Not for the playground. Okay. Just no, the not field. not that I'm aware of. Okay. 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 They might have. I mean, we've had to on all the playgrounds. Also, just so you know, as part of the installation that's not included, our DPW has to do the prep work. So right. that's actually an additional cost that you know we don't pay anyone, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's part of it. So they have to do the prep work. They they might have had Columbia Gas funds to do the prep work over at Grogan's because that was all being done the entire the entire park. Okay. Um, going back to I guess to John's question additional funding, is it is it possible to to and I don't want to create more work just for work's sake, but is it possible to get an accounting of which schools, if any, did spend more so we kind of have an idea of it? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, if, if I'll it's, have if to it's go not back. too much trouble. So um yeah, because the two, one of the schools, two of the schools were done before it was before right. I got involved in it. But I okay. will, I will go back. I can easily ask Lynn to run a report. It it, it could easily it can end up being in a PTO record somewhere, which I'm yeah. sure could be disappeared yeah. as well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but part of the reason that that the big picture uh, playgrounds came about is because of the disparity throughout the community when PTOs were individually having to build their and redo their own playgrounds. So we saw a disparate between certain schools and that was really the catalyst of 
creating this. I applaud Andrew and Lori and from where it began and, and how it's come to fruition is amazing. But I, I just don't ever want to lose sight of, we don't want to push the PT. For, for me, the, the um, reasoning behind this program was to make sure that each school, no matter where located or what type of PTO or involvement that they had, that, you know, everybody had a very nice playground. Right, right. So for me, I don't really care who put in what, and I would prefer them not to. Because mm -hmm. some schools can do more than other schools. Uh, com That's completely you know agree. I mean? No, completely agree. And my, my question just comes from a fact finding because the money's been spent at this point. So yeah. you know, I, I would it is certainly not to say, hey, you know, yay, Kittredge, you guys, you know, picked in an extra hundred thousand dollars for a match because you're right. That defeats the purpose of right. leveling the playing field. But if that was something they did, I, I think we ought to be at least aware of it. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that, totally. That's the only reason I'm asking. Um you know, it, I think it's one of the best programs we've seen in town, to be honest. No, I, 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 I think it's great. And again, if you were to put it out there as a match program instead, well, that defeats mm -hmm. the purpose of, right. of you know, making sure that each school has access to the same equipment or at least the same, same. Mm -hmm. Or equitable equipment. It, yeah. co correct. Correct. That, equitable equipment that is varied and which I think um, yeah. is a good point that you brought up because I, I wouldn't have thought of that because you know, kind of in the world I come from, it's like, well, it's easy to replicate. Let's just crank this out around town, right. but mm -hmm. there'd be no variety. So I think that's actually pretty insightful. Something I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of. So, right. Um, anything else with this project at this point, are we going to close the books on it this year? And at this point it's handed off to the town, right? Is that. Um, well, the, the newest ones, well, yeah, hopefully I don't know where they're at with it. Um, I told okay. them to be prepared. I've been kind of letting them know, like, start doing your stuff before town meeting, like start getting everything together. So on July 1st, boom, you can put your order in. So I'll touch base with them yeah. and find out. Um, it, but yeah, I mean, hopefully by the fall, we'll, we'll be done. We have a couple of things left at Applin um, and we're waiting for picnic tables at Stevens Pond. So those are back ordered, I believe because of COVID. Um, we may end up, I have to talk to Rick tomorrow or next week about if it's going to be so long that we lose the whole season, maybe we'll just cancel the order and, and buy the picnic table somewhere else um, so people can enjoy them. Um, and at take a Athens, ride up north, you know, they're all along the highway. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a project. If just I send the DPW one. truck send up. Send the DPW truck up north. <laughs> <laughs> buy it off someone's front lawn. Um, we, um, and then at Applin, um, they're going to do, it's really outside of this, but we're going to put some trees there. We have a tree budget from Columbia Gas that we're looking to place trees and the neighbors asked for that. We did address a lot of the issues from the neighbors. So I was kind of happy that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're satisfied with it. Um, we are working on a code of conduct sign. Um, for the basketball know, court. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. we're going to, yeah. And um Somebody had brought up the skate park, but I do not believe you can use funds for the skate park. Um, use really? CBC funds, but I'm not sure. I don't know that. Maybe you can, but somebody had brought that up. So I don't know if another like group somewhere is going to come to you at some point in the future and ask about the skate park. Really, <clears throat> I call it the skate park, but really it's just one piece of equipment. Yeah, that, okay. right, right. You know. <laughs> They, skate, they skateboard on. <laughs> that, um, been, that, that was my. Been, that, that was kind of my next question. Is, you know, are there any other sites in town? Yeah. That are identified for any more playgrounds that you're aware of that came up as a part of this process. Hey, it'd be great to have a playground servicing this neighborhood that doesn't have one. My kids no, are beyond that age, so I'm not aware of them all. Yeah. No, but, there's no request for any additional playgrounds. The only thing, like I said, I've heard is the skate park, yeah. and I'm not sure. I. I mean, Rick, you'd know better than me, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that was at the youth center and they got rid of it for a reason. They yeah. did, but Rick, yeah. Rick Gorman has had some discussions with a couple of uh, a couple of kids in the neighborhood who do use the park at Applin, and I think he's going to have further discussion with them. Right. It's really 
when I go down there, it's not utilized very often, but there are a couple of kids I have seen recently down there. Right. So we may see something. I think Rick is going to have some further discussion with, with the kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. I did have a question, so, though, and I haven't I haven't been to the parks. Um, was I supposed to get the signs, or what did you guys do about the signs? What did you decide on getting all the signs for the playgrounds? Because I know we ha I we have money left that can pay for them, but I didn't know what was going on with that. I we approved the spending on of them because I think yeah. we looked at the budget. We looked at the the verbiage and all that, and I think all that was approved. And I now if we well, I don't think we can do it. I thought I think I thought you guys were doing it or handing it off to DPW. So okay. I. Apologize. So I kind of that all happened when I kind of stopped doing the admin stuff for CPC. So I wasn't sure if you guys had taken care of that or not. I can certainly do it. I just need to know what the final decision was on the design. I don't know, Dan. Do you have that? On the design of what? Sorry. Huh? What the design of what? The signs for the playgrounds. I. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I'll I'll look in my I'm certain I have it somewhere. Um I'll I'll go back and dig it out and, and get it over to you. But yeah, we've already voted and approved the funding, approved the sign design, and I think we're yeah, ready to go. So I'm not sure we'd know what to do next. So Okay, yeah. Good. If you just give me the design, I'll take care of the rest. Okay, great. Great. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. Uh any other questions for Lori? No, thank you for everything with that with this project though. Yep. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. It's great to have the support of you guys and the CPC and just, you know, I think it's um it's been a good whoops, been a good example of how we can all work together and yeah. get something done. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. All right. And I think we'll yeah. uh, we'll talk AHT in the fall with you. <laughs> we got some good <laughs> stuff brewing there. Good. 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 Yes. All right. I think at some time some point we might want to look out country though, uh, Shapnas or um, or uh, Galaga, you know, because they're, you know, everybody does have to come downtown for that. But I mean, if nobody's requesting it, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach out. But I would keep, I would just keep an open line with that. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, I'm with you. Sarah. Is, there, is there a space where you could put a playground? I mean, people probably don't reach out because they don't really. I don't know. Maybe they don't know that we could. Yeah. But. I don't see why you couldn't behind center field at one of the sharpeners fields. I was sitting there the other night. Yeah. There's, a, there's a decent gap between right field of the bigger diamond and a right field for the, you know, there's a, I think a little bit of gap there. Mm -hmm. on center field there. Okay. Yeah. Plenty of room at Gallagher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or uh, Foster too. It was a lot of, you'd have to do more work at Foster, but there's you know, a lot of room. <clears throat> Right. right. I'm just I'm just saying out country we're not we don't have anything, but if if something you know we can we can see if somebody ends up requesting something or whatever. I just would like to keep an open mind with that. That's all. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, Lori. Thank you very much for your time. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Have a thank great you, weekend, everybody. Appreciate you too. Happy Fourth. Thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. Last but not least, on uh, for items on the agenda, um, the CPC application process, um, which I think we've been talking about for the last few few meetings. Uh, Dan, it should be in, in everyone's meeting packet. Dan put together um, I mean, a nice presentation. I don't know if you want to share your screen, Dan, if you're in a spot to do that, and maybe yeah. kind of walk everyone through what we're talking about, so that we can hopefully. You know, wrap up this year and roll into next year, hit the ground running, uh, and, and and you know get back, uh, get on track in, in a in a post COVID world. So, yeah. So uh, for starters, um, let me know if you're having trouble hearing me. I couldn't find my headset, um, but I will share my screen and we can get going. Um, All right, so in addition to the presentation in the, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. 
All right. So in addition to the presentation and the meeting packet, you will also see um, different applications from different towns. Are um, you all seeing presentation screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so I'll just breeze through this really quickly um, and hopefully we can discuss it more afterwards. Um, pardon me if I have this wrong, I'm, as you know, new to this, um, but looking back at old agendas and minutes and through what I've been through with you guys over the last few months, um, this is my sense of the North Andover CPC funding cycle. Um, so in the fall, you're typically you know, going over uh, existing projects, getting updates, and uh, maybe looking ahead at potential prospects of new projects. Um, January to February, at least this year, was when we were looking at or um, receiving new applications. Um, we had the hearings in March and then um, finalizing the warrant articles and town meeting. Um, and that's had great results for the CPC for many years. And um, I don't think that we should disrupt that process. Um, but I do want to look at what other towns are doing to consider what can we do to improve this process. Um, and some things to consider um, when doing that are looking at back at the establishing um, legislation and the town bylaw, um, which is notoriously vague. Um, so it requires that the CPC study the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town um, with no real explanation of how that should be done. Um, and no enforcement of that. Um, consulting with municipal boards, so there's deep institutional knowledge with the CPC and people representing many boards. And so um, we expect that, you know, that information is being brought from boards to um, the CPC to sort of inform decision making. Um, and the last one, the real important one is that the CPC should hold one or more informational public meetings on the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town. Specifically, they should, with two weeks notice, let the public know that they will be holding a hearing and invite the public to come express what they believe the town needs could be doing or what resources could be better utilized. And so that's something that I haven't seen in um, at least recent years of CPC agenda minutes. Um, maybe it just wasn't <coughs> documented in that way, but that is definitely a practice that um, should be picked back up. Um, but haven't we had our annual meeting, John, correct me if I'm wrong, at Stevens Estate for many years? Yeah, I mean, Dan, I think you were right. Probably the last couple of years, uh, we haven't had that, but in prior years, <laughs> Tracy, you're right. Uh, it hasn't always been at Stevens Estate. Uh, and what I would say is that the level of um, uh, work that was put into the meetings has varied by years. There have been a few times that we've had very elaborate meetings. I think the last time we were at Stevens Estate, we had Stuart Saginaw come. Yes. And other yes. people come. Uh, yes. In the past, I, I, I think one time in, I by way of history, I think we even had some of our state reps come. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 frankly, the deep, dark secret is hardly anybody ever comes. But, <laughs> uh, nonetheless, it's probably a good practice to get back into. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, and there's just, it's, it's how do you get people to come out and, you know, participate in something like this is really the big, big thing. Right, right. That's, but can we, can we satisfy the requirement by, just posting a meeting, you know, a public hearing meeting where we go, like we know, we, we should, I mean, COVID obviously has thrown a wrench, but wouldn't yeah. it just be at least, you know, we post 14 to 21 days in advance and we plan that public hearing. And I mean, even if it's a virtual, but I hope to God that ends soon. Um, <laughs> we'll know, be virtual next year. Yeah. Town yeah. Hall. It doesn't I mean, it, it, to give it like in the old days, uh, we used to actually have an advertisement in the same way like the planning board with the public hearings would have right, an right. advertisement. There have been a few years where we've had a, not a single person shown up. I've been there. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think if we do it, you, you follow the legal requirements, but you, you know, it, it, it's education. You know, yeah, maybe you do bring somebody in who's an interesting person that people would be interested in something to draw people out. I think. You know, something like that would be a great idea. Okay. Right. I, and so. Go ahead, Dan. Um, I'm not 
So I'm just going off of what I could find in the documentation, which I know is a little spotty. And the last couple of years, yes, there wasn't a public hearing. I was not aware of the annual meetings. And I'm just no. going over this and hopefully we can discuss after yeah. how we want to proceed in the fall. Sure. Um, so not making recommendations based on the examples that I'm going to present, but just things to be considering mm -hmm. looking at other towns. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, um, if, if I could just, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to butt in before, but I was on mute. But I think one interesting thing on the committees is we do have representation from other committees, but it's not like the conservation committee has come to us and said like, hey, here are our top three priorities of what we want to see funded in the next two years, or here are the key priorities that came out of the open space plan that we should be working on. And I, I don't, I don't think that's, you know, it is kind of interesting because there's a member of the conservation committee on our committee, but, um, you know, we, we don't hear from the committee. We don't hear from these other boards kind of in an official capacity. You know, in terms of like, here's our wish list, or here are some of our priorities, and and what can we what can we do together? And and I do think that that's an area where we could, you know, that might be fruitful to say like, you know, to, to hear from the committee as a whole in terms of where they're coming from and what their priorities are for the next, you know, one, two, three, four, five years. Bill, if I can for just for a second, I, I think if we kind of get through these next few slides, we're yeah, yeah, doing. Yeah. I think kind of at the end, Dan, kind of brackets a few of those things. And I think maybe yeah. we'll get through these slides and it will, I think this can lead to a, a good positive discussion on it. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. And just responding to Bill, um, the mass, I know the master plan implementation committee has been interested in either having some of you guys at their meeting or coming to one of these meetings to discuss master plan goals that are relevant to the CPC. Um, so anyways, uh, Tewksbury, they um, have a fairly similar schedule um you know they start considering future projects in november they do have that public hearing that we talked about um, but they do also do two funding cycles which isn't necessarily practical or something that i would prescribe you cpc seems to do well with um you know working on the annual town meeting and um, not focusing on a special town meeting um, but uh, their applications are much more extensive um, requiring things like property records, uh, full narrative on what is the relevance to the town, um, a more detailed line item budget and justification for spending on this project, um, which does often get covered in the uh, CPC applications, but it is a little more um, up to the applicant what level of information they're including. And so for a more rigorous review, um, Tewksbury include, um, includes Quite a few questions on their uh, application, um, but the rest of the year, January, February, July, um, it's fairly similar to what we're doing in North Andover. Um, Acton is probably the most intensive extreme. They do a community preservation plan every single year. Um, the one I included in the packet is like 50 pages long, probably not something we would want to do. Um, but is something that they get out of a public hearing process, um, both from previous years and um, uh, following up on the community preservation plan that they lay out for that year. So that informs how um, you know they select projects going forward by hearing public comment on the community preservation plan, as well as um, hearing on you know what people are looking for in projects. Did it? No, I'll wait to the end. I was going to say, isn't part of the reason that they have such an extensive application process, wasn't Act in one of the communities that kind of got in trouble for funding churches and stuff? Yeah, okay. That, that sounds familiar, but I I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah, I think I that's why it's so extensive now. <laughs> that would make sense. Um, and they have a longer uh, application review period, so applications are due at the beginning of December, um, and then they have uh, multiple hearings. And so it seems like, uh, you know, discussions on each project are a little more drawn out. But yeah, if they got in trouble, that would make sense. Um, one of the things that came up this year in our 
um, your review um, was talking to a butters act and requires that for some of their projects. Um, and so that's something we might want to consider. Um, they also require photographs of the space if um, that's applicable or if it's a existing resource. Um, and also considering limitations to funding uh, with the CPC. Uh, Lexington um, focuses a lot on um, historical resources um, and they um, seek input not just on public needs but very specific things that the public would like to see um, before they get into the application process. Um, similarly, they draft uh, an assessment report not quite as extensive as Acton. Um, then they have a sort of pre-application process where people apply sort of in a light manner. Um, and then those projects are reviewed both for eligibility, but also people can get feedback on, you know, what the committee would like to see in those projects, which I think would certainly help um, with some of the projects that we had seen this year where there were, uh, you know, questions, there wasn't enough time to really work out some of the issues on some of the projects we saw or, um, you know, projects that were just outright ineligible. Um, so another thing to consider, you're, you will see that most of these are, um, you know, wrapping up in early spring, late winter, around the time that we would be too, um, just starting the application process a little bit earlier. Um, and so just considering summary of this, um, you know, there's more opportunities for engagement, um, such as both pr promoting the process. Um, so like getting the word out that applications are due earlier on, um, working closely with other boards and potentially a butter outreach, um, using processes to prioritize projects um, and consideration um, so that you can really draw up people who have projects on their mind but may not be applying every year, may not be realizing that uh, you know the application deadline is coming up. Um, and then there's other ways of um, doing the review process, which at this point, I'm sure you all understand. And that's all I have, just throwing that out there. <laughs> and th thank you for the, the, the time you put in, in reviewing that and, and appreciate it. And I did get a little overwhelmed when I saw the, uh, the Acton. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> Me too. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Don't, don't think that that's necessarily, especially, and I think, you know, from my perspective for, you know, we have a master plan as a part of the town and, you know, I think finding a way that that CPC can support the goals of the master plan would certainly solve for creating a CPC plan, uh, which would almost be a little bit redundant, in, I think, in, in that sense. But uh, but I'm going to put it out to the floor and Tracy, you had a couple of thoughts and thank you guys for, for holding to the end. So. Tracy, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. No, I am. Um, no, I agree with you. I think, you know, the, the master, uh, you know, we have the master plan that, that we should be um, uh, definitely feeding off of. Um, I, I agree with Bill. I love the idea of reaching out more to other boards. I mean, we're all representative of other boards. That's what creates us. Um, you know, maybe we do more of a formal when we go back to our other boards, sans the selectmen's representatives, but even the select, the select, uh, Select board, whatever the problem now. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> select board, yes. A little old school, yes. Yeah. Whatever they are. You know, even even the selectmen's representatives could go to them and say, get on one of their agendas and just say, what what would you like? I can specifically ask my executive director at the Housing Authority, Maggie, put me on as CPC rep in, and engage with our boards. I, I like that. And I, you know, um, invite them to the annual hearing, those kind of things. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely like, it, this is definitely brought to light some of the things that we could definitely do better. And now that the plague's lifted, you know, next year will be a lot easier and better for us to be reaching out across um, boards and committees. So thank you, Daniel. But I don't think we need to be as extensive as Acton because we are yeah. well, we get in trouble. There's only so much either one of us can put on our plate right now. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Bill, you had some additional thoughts? No, I think you know, I think there's a lot of good um, ideas to come out of it. And it really is a lot of education. I mean, I spent like 
two and a half, three years on the finance committee before I knew that all the CPC applications can't, you know, came from citizens and not from the committee. You know, I, I don't think people know the application process very well. And that, you know, and it's, it really is the most democratic thing in town. Like you come up with an idea for a project that fits into one of these three categories and you can get some people together and, and get some funding. Like it's very grassroots. And um, I, I think it's finding out, finding ways to connect with different groups to do that is great. I mean, it's great when we have a partner like the Affordable Housing Trust or the Fields Committee that has like clearly defined means and meets regularly. It's really easy. It's just a question of how can we, you know, create some more connections and and drum up some more interest and and get some people, you know, through the process. Um. Let me, let me ask a question for those of you who've been around the committee a lot longer than I have. Has, has there ever been an engagement campaign, mailers sent home or, you know, certainly use of social media? We have administrative dollars, right? I mean, even if we created a Facebook page, I mean, that's always been one of the things is like, how do we let people know that we're out there? And, and then I think we started to pick up a little steam. And then, of course, again, the plague. But mm -hmm. um now that that's moving along, I think we we could move forward. I mean, maybe we work with the um, um, Daniel. I don't know his name. The um, you know the tech guy, the technical. You know, and I don't know who does like the tech. Maybe it's something Jillian does. Like, is that do we add extra dollars for someone to do a Facebook and 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 Twitter and stuff like that? I mean, it doesn't have to be every day all the time, but. And that was one of the reasons we were so gung ho with signage so that people even know that we exist. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think step by step, I think now we can really start to move forward on ideas. Mm -hmm. So I, I work a lot with uh, Sarah Brush, who's the social media manager for the town uh, for planning stuff. And um, this, this year when applications were due, I'd ask Lori if you all typically do some social media blast or something for when applications are out. And she said, not typically. Um, so I did one last minute this year, but obviously that's not enough to like reach everybody, but it's certainly right. something that would be feasible for next year. Um, yeah, maybe we can that. explore that a little bit more and even more regular as a playground goes on or mm -hmm. look at these pictures of the what, or when they're all done or, you know, just, you know, maybe we can start to move in that direction. Right. I mean, I think one of the things we talked about doing was a workshop too, just kind of like yes. a two, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a two part thing. You've got to get people in the funnel, you know, with, this is a germ of an idea that fits within our mission. And then two, it does require, like, it's, it's a lot of work to, um, to get the application through and done. So it really, when you look at it, you think it's probably 12 months before someone takes the seed of an idea to, have it fully developed to be approved so you know i think that that's another thing like a how-to session just how how do you do this you know i think we had when we did have that bigger session at the stevens estate we we brought somebody in and said how did you go through, you know how did you do this project you know and they talked about some of the steps so that that can be helpful you know in a workshop in the fall i mean the hard part about the fall is it's the fall and everything is you know everything's yeah. kicking into high gear and it's it's tough to find the time but that's when we need to do it for um you know to make sure we can get those applications in by february yeah yeah and, and i think um you know if you look at a lot of the applications we funded in recent years the vast majority of them are from experienced applicants folks mm -hmm. who've been before us before a number of times they know we exist they know the process we know them because very smooth. If we're going to really make a push of greater community engagement, we're going to get a lot of first time applicants, I would expect. And that should be the goal, right? To get some more first time applicants at least coming through, which will possibly require a little more hand holding on our part. And maybe it is a two stage process of initial review. Here's what is required. And then we'll guide you to get you ready for the, uh, you know, for the big show. Would it be would it be helpful to put some guidelines together besides the application itself? Just a brief outline of right. how you develop a project and bring it to the board for approval on the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something I probably could put together because I'm mm -hmm. involved with construction. So, 
it may yeah. be helpful to applicants to under I, I think a lot of people are just unfamiliar with yeah. how you come to the board with a project and bring it to fruition and really what falls within the guidelines of a project that could be approved. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people in town know that. A lot of people totally. don't really realize that some of their taxes go to who <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's that 3% for? What does that mean? <laughs> well, I mean, beyond, you know, Tom, obviously this was the, the 20th anniversary and we put together a nice presentation, you know, for mm -hmm. you know, the select board and the you know, FinCom and, and we get, you know, 30 seconds to talk about it at that town meeting. It was in the packet. Um, is there any appetite from the committee to do a promotional mailer of, hey, it's the 20th anniversary of CPC Here's where your tax dollars have gone. Yeah. You know, by the way, mm -hmm. here's here's what we could have in store. You could have a project with a CPC. Mm -hmm. Here's how to engage with us. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's a great start. It's okay. publicizing it in, keep an eye open for fall workshops or whatever. Yeah, I, yeah, I love yeah. it. I like it a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you come with that. You know, we could put it in the same. I don't know, obviously, how the the town works, but if it'd be possible, the too, next I mean, tax bill, the next with the tax bill. You know, yeah. like like with the town manager's newsletter. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We um, just ask for our own sheet, though. We can't just get one of those paragraphs that they. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we want to do something nice. I, I, you know, I think it really, you know, uh, and, and again, remind the taxpayers: this is where you know we're being thoughtful with your, you know, your dollars, and and this is where it's going. Um, and then I think that that would allow us to at least allow people give them the opportunity to engage with us in a technological sense. Here's our website. Here's our, you know, here's where you can find us on social media. You know, here's where you can have more information. Be ready, be on the lookout in September when everything else is happening. But here's how you can find out when our meetings, what our meeting schedule is going to be. Because we're not going to set that tonight, obviously, uh, of how we're going to handle our agenda. Um, but you know, at least we can get people get it on people's mind um, and ready for the fall before they turn off, uh, or at least ready for when we're ready to go. Um, you know, we could meet July and August and get all this stuff done if everybody wants. <laughs> All right, I'm not hearing a motion on that. Okay, um, everyone's suddenly on mute. <laughs> Brian, I owe you time. June, May, June was a little crazy at the Watson, so I owe you time. I'm kidding. Um, all right, so so if we can maybe try, try to bracket this in a little bit um, and, and see if I can get some consensus from everyone in terms of a couple of these initiatives that we think we should try to do to, to, to make some changes. Um, you know, I think I think what I heard definitely is getting back to the annual meeting, um, you know, without a doubt. Uh, and I think that probably ought to happen earlier in the funding cycle. Right. I mean, that should probably be an October meeting. Is that sound fair? No, it was always usually. Well, was it I the other end? John would know better. I'm not gonna say John, was that the big end? Yeah. Think, I think they varied. They sometimes it, the earliest i remember we did it i think was in november but there might have been one that was in october and maybe through january okay yeah well i mean i, I guess if it's more just more of an informational meeting uh, is that i i think you know the, so the, the public hearing we could probably suffice by having an agenda item reserved for our regular business in one of our early meetings for a public hearing on needs assessment right we have that on the agenda Hopefully we've gotten some sort of a notification out that we'll be having these meetings be on the lookout um, and then at least fill, fulfill the legal requirement. But I, I would, we would certainly welcome as much public input as we could possibly get um, along with the master plan committee and everything else. But I think we should definitely get back to the annual meeting. If that, as long as that doesn't hinge anywhere in our funding cycle, right? We don't have to, I think that feels like it's a separate meeting, John, or did that always kind of drive some portion of the funding cycle? Uh, we we sort of did. I mean, again, it varied and it depended whether we thought there was going to be a lot of things coming up that we wanted to, to publicize with people. But I, I guess the point that I would make is that even the times that we publicized pretty aggressively for something like this and had lots of speakers, there were no more than a handful of people that came. So, I mean, you, you're not going to get 30 or 40 people. You, it's just not going to happen. No, I, 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 yeah. I 
I, I get that, you know, that, that's, you know, that's reserved for the bigger ticket items on, uh, on town meeting, not us. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, what, what if we, what if we took, you know, took this approach where we have our, you know, we, we, we publicize it to, to, to meet the requirements. What if, you know, maybe towards the end of the year, after we've made our, after we've made our recommendations, right, we've prepped, we've notified the select board and finance committee and we're ready for the town meeting warrant, but we have a couple of those meetings in between stuff we would have had this spring, um, maybe in place of this type of meeting that we're having now, uh, if we were to put together a bigger meeting, invite all of the relevant stakeholder committees within town um, and, and try to get in a guest speaker of so, something related to CPC or related to one of the projects that may not necessarily advance, you know, our funding for that particular cycle, but at least help showcase some of the projects that we've done in town and you get some good attendance from other, you know, other, uh, you know, uh, you know, service members within town. Does that make some sort of sense? Did I not explain that clearly? No, no I think that's good. No, but okay. Okay. Um, how does everyone feel about a two stage application process? I don't know if that would frighten off applicants. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, I'd like to have it so that if there's an issue with an application, there's enough time that we can work with that applicant. Um, you know, if it's just a technical thing or whatever to okay. work with that applicant two stage might, I don't know. I mean, we're begging for people to come to us now. I'd hate to make it even more complicated. This sure. is my only thought. Well, th that, that might achieve the same goal of a two-stage application without actually being a two-stage application, right? right? Um, if, if it's, you know, here's our, here's our deadline, here's our review period, and maybe we have a longer review period before the hearings to, to allow applicants to refine their application. Yes. Based and on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I think that could work. It would just, we'd have to, we'd have to pull our deadline up, I would say, November? Early December. Well, I, I mean, if you think about it, there's a couple of there's three or four what I'm going to call conduits, which are the logical places where applications would come from. If you really think about it, based on history, you've got the library, you've got Stevens Estate, you have the historical society, and frankly, there's they're going to pretty much hit most likely historical projects just in some shape or form or somebody associated with it. You're, you're also in the area of recreation. Obviously, Rick is here. Other people are here. A lot of those things are pretty well covered and pretty well understood. Uh, same thing, frankly, with open space. Uh, it's the same way. Um, so... There's probably a subset of things, but it's almost like it, it feels to be maybe a better approach is to figure out a little bit where that stuff is going to come from. I mean, I know this past year we had the applications from Michael Smolak that were a little bit uh, you know, kind of off the map a little bit. And they're kind of interesting ideas, but, yeah, they weren't fundable. Uh, you know, and, and maybe, you know, you're trying to stimulate some of those sort of things, but I think uh, it's, it, it, people just come out of the woodwork and you, you, you sometimes just can't always anticipate it. That's, that's the point of it. Can I speak to uh, two things? Sure, Dan. Yeah. Not making a recommendation here, just noting a couple things. Uh, one is that while well, some towns do have a paper pre-application, some just have uh, you come in and you talk about your project and you get feedback on it um, if you think that that's necessary. Um, and so a little more just working the idea out than like requiring a submission or something. Um, and the other thing is that I found more often the hearings came before any sort of pre-application, which I would think would help identify where new applications might be coming from too, if you're getting like, and I guess you don't get a lot of people at those meetings anyways, but if you got, you know, some random citizens there who are like, we need this, and you were like, you can apply for it, then that would kind of help you identify where the... I like it. 
uh, mm -hmm. sort of unexpected projects are going to come from. That's uh, not, not every town does it that way, but I did find more often than not the the hearing came first. I like it. Okay. Um, is there? I mean, is if we were to pull if we were to pull our application deadline earlier, say you know I think it was February fifth this year. Let's say we pulled it forward two months to December fifth. I oh. think that would be a horrible idea. Oh, that's way too much. Applications early. rather than more applications. I think, if <laughs> anything, we, you know, I like to push back is because uh, what happens is, like it or not, this stuff's a late start. And if you push it way early, I think you're going to get far less of it. And then you're going to have a really long period of time between when the applications come in and town meeting, which I think is a mistake. Okay. I agree. Okay. I agree, John. Do are we leaving ourselves enough time for the hearing and application refinement process if we want to do that? That's, why, it, that's why I was suggesting it. So. Yeah, I, it, but I mean, if if you look at it over the projects we've done over the years, there have been any number of them that, for example, things that have come, the fact that we meet just about yearly with Stevens Estate and they come up with something, it gets talked about and vetted. That process of pre, you know, bringing things up, pre-staging, it happens with Stevens Estate. It, it's happened with, you know, uh, the library. I mean, we had, you know, I think it was, I'm not trying to think, Terry was, I think, on the board then, but we had, when we were trying to deal with uh, how we should repair the roof of the library, there was, oh gosh, we went back for close to six months talking about that and how to do that before we ended up on the final approach. I mean, Terry, remember just how much we got? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, look, yeah. Even the front stairs, we're still talking about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I, so I would say then we're not going to make any recommendation to change our schedule at this point. We'll, we'll adapt as, as needed and we'll go through our, our crunch if we have to, if we get a big flux of projects. I mean, we've had to do that a couple of times, but that's, that should be manageable if we're used to it. Um, we'll work on the promotion for the fall. Um, and I think maybe we'll you know, use some of our fall meetings to schedule times with other boards in addition to our representatives does that seem to to make sense to everyone yep. you're on mute tracy yeah i like that i mean i don't know if other boards will actually come before us i mean at least if we if we as our reps go back to our boards and at least get on one of their agendas do you know what i mean yeah. they may not want to pick up additional meetings is my point right. but we ask them Please put right. CPC on an agenda at planning, housing, you know, wherever, mm -hmm. um, historical society. And and even if we compile what they tell us, right. do you know what I'm saying? That's right. fine. I'm happy to travel, too. I'm happy to. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to yeah. You know what I mean? Either way. I mean, because. Yeah, I think that you're right. That that's probably more of our obligation to outreach to them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see? So both, you know, for everyone who's a representative of another board here, make sure you're on in the fall to gather priorities and bring it back to us. So maybe we'll plan to have one of our meetings, you know, later in the fall. Okay, everyone report back from your committee on on priorities where CPC can can help. Yeah. And again, I'm happy to 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 travel and attend any of those meetings as necessary. So and they get that, then we can maybe our chair could come if they want. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah, saying. Right. Yep. Okay. At least compile the info. Okay. All right. Um, any other thoughts on this uh, on this topic before we uh, move on? Dan, you're, you're you're clear on direction. I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everybody, for for taking the time on that and um, and the thoughtful thoughtful discussion on it. So. Um, all right, last uh, agenda, mi uh, minutes from April 8th. Do I have a motion? Uh, move to approve the minutes from April 8th as, as written. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Rick, thank you. Uh, all right, all those in favor, John? 
Yes. Tracy? I'm saying. Uh, Terry? Yes. Bill? Yes. CJ? Abstain. Dan Rick? Yes. Uh, and I vote yes as well. Uh, all right. Do I have another motion? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm not going to do a roll call. Everybody have a great summer. Have a great 4th of July. Um, have a good one. Thank you. 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 Thank